Well, hey again, everyone. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update here because it's been a tad bit quiet on the channel since I posted up that big, massive project I did with the Terminator 2 home video retrospective type of thing. Because uh, I did that, then I decided I was going to take a week off from doing any editing and such like that because I was building up to another big project, which I'm going to get to here shortly here. But since I did that, I posted up a couple of commentaries, but didn't really have much else going on here. So... Just posted up a Blu-ray news video up on the Patreon account because everyone who's a $1 Patreon backer gets one day early access to that. So if you're interested in supporting the channel a little bit, you can punch over to Patreon. $1 gets you all that kind of stuff, a couple of other things here and there. And you can look out a couple of other tiers if you're interested in that type of stuff to get early access to videos and such. And uh, coming up tomorrow night, well, not tomorrow night. Right now it's like late Wednesday, but Friday night, uh, Trent, Steve, and myself are going to be recording a commentary to Back to the Future. It's going to be a bit of a, a quarterly type of affair that we're going to cover the trilogy in. So we're going to be doing that here, end of March here, and then probably in June we'll do Back to the Future Part 2, and then like September Part 3, and then they'll roll us into Christmas and we'll do Die Hard 2 and everything. So it works out nicely, and that was very much Steve's idea to kind of plan things out in that type of fashion. So... I think that works perfectly to get the three of us in every few months to kind of keep that thing going and just uh, have a great time with it. So if you've not heard the Die Hard commentary, we had an absolute blast doing that back in Christmas time. So check that out if you're interested. And uh, next couple of weeks, we'll get up the Back to the Future commentary once I get the Ghostbusters 2 commentary posted to the channel, which will be fairly soon. But uh, review-wise, I'm definitely working on getting towards doing another review here. And I... Kind of felt it was about time to do Predator 2, because I did the uh, first Predator back in uh, August, which is the last uh, review I did in the old place before he moved and everything. So, the uh, trailer for Shane Black's The Predator is supposed to be coming up sometime soon. They're doing a couple minor reshoots right now, and uh, rumors of a uh, teaser trailer coming up soon. So, get Predator 2 reviewed, and hopefully that'll hit with a nice trailer there. And over the summer, I'll do Predators. And September, we'll get The Predator, if everything continues to stick on schedule this time for the release date of that, because it was already pushed back from March to August, then August, September, so hopefully things are working out well for it, and we'll get a really good film here, because as I'll like, eventually get into more depth there, I think The Predator franchise, just as the main line films, is a really solid franchise of films, so really excited to get into Predator 2. And uh, from there, I'll work on the stuff I have backlogged that I've been promising for a couple of months now. So that's coming up soon. So that's all the stuff that's coming up as in terms of new videos coming up on the channel. And uh, I've got a lot of media pickups. I'm going to kind of like uh, splice them between two different videos here. I'm going to do a lot of uh, HD stuff. And then the next video I'll do for the updates and everything, I'll deal with the Stator Def stuff I picked up with a couple DVDs I got and a bunch of LaserDisc stuff I got a couple weeks ago. But uh, I want to get into a little bit of something here that's a bit of a hype video here because stuff I've been working on the last few weeks since the Terminator 2 thing went up on the channel, all that type of stuff, is that I've been working on a music video for our friends in Hemi because they put out their brand new album, Avalon. Uh, back in February and everything, a nice uh, six-track type of thing going on here, and it's a fantastic explosion of heavy metal uh, influences and inspirations and different styles that they've kind of just injected into this entire maelstrom of fantastic heavy metal intensity and everything. So we came together, I decided it's been a very long time. We've been wanting to do an actual video shoot for years now. Because uh, the first one we did was in 2008, 10 years ago, for Fire in the Sky, which was tied into my film The Fixer and everything, and uh, various other things like that. And uh, everything we've done since then is music videos. It's always been kind of spliced together from, like, uh, studio footage of them rehearsing or recording, or a bunch of live footage we kind of thrown together or whatnot, just on the spur of the moment or whatever the case. Because we did have a live album a couple years ago, so we did that. And then the Nevermore video was kind of a spur-of-the-moment type of thing for Trent to kind of have me do as uh, as kind of an editing project, a favor to myself to kind of keep me occupied while I was kind of going through a couple of bad things that, that summer or whatnot, which I appreciated. And it turned out pretty nice. But 
we've been wanting to do an actual video shoot for like freaking seven years now. And just like this thing came out and it's like, we've got to do this. We've got to do this. We've got to put the time aside, make a date for it, plan it out and get a freaking video shot because it's too damn long. And this has been such a, a mountain of hard work that he's got to put into months and months and months recording this blasted thing. They just had to get a video out, something really sharp, really intense, very raw and everything. And we shot the thing on uh, Sunday the 11th. I got the thing edited within uh, the last week in sorts. So uh, it's ready to go. We're premiering it on Monday, March 26th. So if you hit up any of our social medias, you get a little uh, teaser video of sorts I spliced together for it. And uh, we're going to be premiering it on all the platforms across the board on Monday. So you're going to be able to see it there and enjoy it. We uh, we are absolutely, positively, thoroughly excited for this thing because we've I did my edits. I had Tim, the guitarist, who's kind of very much in-depth about the intricacies of, of the guitar work and all that type of stuff and everything to really kind of nail down that everything was nicely synced up and all these little things that were no, no real kind of odds and ends or in kind of anomalies and the performance matching the the song or whatnot so we went through this thing with a fine tooth comb got it down nice and sharp and clean everyone's thoroughly satisfied with it i'm i couldn't be happier with it i absolutely could not be uh just having the opportunity to go out and actually shoot something because it's been so long since i've done any kind of film projects i knew this was this thing that i could really kind of just sink my teeth into shoot it get it really good and just like just get into that mode again of just shooting something and editing something and creating something like that i, I can't be more happy about it these guys are gonna these guys already love it i know all the fans are absolutely gonna chew this thing out because it's one of these like real tight quick hit you hard type of songs that is like two and a half minutes long with about a half minute or so uh, ambient intro of sorts the thing just hits hard Gets in, gets out, nice, lean, tight type of thing. It's like, I keep watching the video, I can't want to re-watch it because it's like, it just leaves you wanting more with the song and the video. Just You just absolutely just hit it hard. I just love it. I can't say anything more about it. Hope you're excited for it. Look for it, dropping on the channel here and all those social media platforms for Raymond Film and Hemi on Monday, guys. So, we'll be hitting that up really easily. So, check out that. And, uh... Getting into some of the media pickups, I figure since I'm talking a little metal here, I'll just uh, throw up that uh, over the weekend because I've been listening to more Metallica lately, and I figured I grab up the the the, uh, the remasters of Ride the Lightning and Master of Puppets and everything. They're five bucks a piece. I found them over at Meyer and everything. I figured, why the hell not? Uh, I considered getting the uh, more the expanded edition of Mo uh, Master of Puppets. But uh, it, it was about 20 bucks, and it's like, am I going to get as much mileage out of a lot of demos and kind of off, offbeat riff tracks or whatnot? And uh, just the, the, the live performances are very much of the time in terms of quality. The performances are good, just like audio quality is not always fantastic. Some of it's live uh, recordings for fans. I felt like, eh, am I really going to pay an extra $15 to get that type of stuff that... It's a little bit more ancillary to the quality of the actual album and whatnot. So I decided five bucks a piece to get the, the remastered tracks, which I don't think there's as m a major difference or whatnot, but I felt like uh, one, my, my, my CDs of Ride the Lightning have a little bit of a scratch on it in terms of Call of Cthulhu, and so I figured, why the hell not with that? And I figured Master of Puppets is one of the fan most fantastic metal albums ever put together. I might as well get that, and it's always felt like if there can be a little bit of extra something to the Master of Puppets production sound, I'd definitely take it, and uh, I ripped these for my iPhone and whatnot with Apple Lossless, so I figured I, I get as much out of this as possible from these rips and everything. It's like, I, I've, these are, this is the third time I've bought these albums, because I've got the original Electro releases, and then I've got the, the, the gold disc versions that are put out in the early 2000s and whatnot so i've got these time and time again uh there's a look of the, the gold version of master of puppets there as i fall, drop it on the floor but uh yeah because i grabbed these up at the same time i also got the uh the uh the gold uh, cd version of van halen's debut and that sounded fantastic i think that added something more to it in general but uh 
yeah, I figured, I mean, I've had <laughs> these many copies of it. I figured five bucks extra for a new remaster. Not bad. I think the best metal remasters I've heard are pretty much like the Judas Priest ones they put out like 2000, 2001. They really had a, a real sense of more separation of tracks and everything like that. Just felt really fucking good. I've always enjoyed those a lot. And also the, uh, the Megadeth ones were kind of remixed and remastered, and they've also they've had a lot of different qualities to them. But uh, I always enjoyed those as well. But uh, regards to that, that's off with the metals type of stuff, and we'll move into just the the Blu-ray section of the stuff I picked up lately, because uh, my birthday was at the end of February, as some people know, some people might not know, and so uh, I picked up some I picked up some stuff for myself ties into what my sister got me and then I kind of filled out the rest of the things shortly thereafter but uh, one of the things that my sister got me for my birthday was just I, I I was so ecstatic when this I opened up the package and I saw this as the arrow video remaster of Hellraiser on blu-ray this steelbook edition came out back in uh, on Halloween last year and Hellraiser is one of my favorite horror films of all time. It does have its rough edges, some things that are not quite as good as it could be, such as a couple of the creatures that you see in the film, but generally the, the ideas, the execution of ideas, the, a lot, the acting is fantastic, so much of the, the practical makeup effects are just blown away type of stuff. The vision of the film is absolutely phenomenal to me. And to get this as a, a I never had Hellraiser on Blu-ray before. Stuck with the last Anchor Bay release for on DVD for years now. So getting this Arrow video remaster of Hellraiser from like I think it was a 2K scan or whatnot. I hadn't even got into special features yet. I just threw the thing on one night. The fantastic 5.1 surround sound was absolutely wonderful. And just like enjoying this. I know it's always been a grainy film. I never had any kind of illusion that it was going to look pristine in HD, but I did know that it really did need a remaster, something to get as much out of the quality of the visuals in the film as possible, and I was very much happy with this. I'm very happy with this, and came with this nice uh, fold-out poster and everything, which has uh, kind of the original theatrical artwork on one side of it, with uh, Doug Bradley there and everything, and then they have this much more... Uh, brand new type of artwork on the other side so we'll see if I end up finding a way to throw this on a wall or something like that. I had a, uh, a mini poster of uh, Hellbound from the uh, last Anchor Bay release I believe from on DVD and everything so uh, I kind of lost that at some point. I might have it somewhere I don't know. Whatever. But regardless of that, that's really nice. I can't tell you this. Another little Arrow very release. Ho hopefully they'll, they'll end up doing the same thing for Hellbound this year because uh, this is the 30th anniversary of Hellraiser 2 and uh, I can't imagine they not doing that this year as well but uh, yeah there's the, the Scarlet Box which would get me even more features than just these two because uh, I'm not a big fan of Hellraiser 3 it's kind of a shit box but uh, in regards to that I thought I, 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 I kind of mulled over getting the Scarlet Box for a little while but uh, kind of bad around because it's, it's a bit of a pricey thing but getting this on, as a birthday present is phenomenal but uh one of the other big other, big other thing here is that uh <clears throat> get out just right on it i just i picked up the entire series of star trek the next generation on blu-ray because uh got got tax return got a little un, extra influx of money birthday was coming up Figured I'd, uh, I'd, I'd splurge on a little something for myself. So I ended up buying seasons two and three first. And because I personally, season three is kind of like my favorite season in general because it just has kind of the most constant, the biggest concentration of episodes I really, really enjoy going back to. Uh, you've got Deja Q, you've got uh, The Enemy, you got The Defector, you got Sarek. A lot of great episodes all over this whole thing. I can't even get into it now, but. And I got season two because sometimes I'm in a season two kind of mood. Because uh, it's got Q Who, Measure of a Man, a whole bunch of really good episodes where silence has Lee. So it's got a really solid episodes in there. I figured seasons two and three would be a nice building block for myself. And of course, my sister got me season four for my birthday. So that was the other half of that. So that was fantastic. So I could, if I want to, watch both halves of Best of Both Worlds and some other fantastic episodes. And. Things just went along from there because uh, SingandSpin.com had a uh, a sale going on. It was like 20% off plus free shipping. So 
I ordered season one along with season six, but they uh, ended up sending me the DVD version of season six for some damn reason. But ended up being fortunate because I got season one for like 11 bucks with that sale and everything because it's all used. But uh, seasons two and three, I got them for maybe like 15 bucks a piece. So I got this for about $11. And then uh, because uh, I sent, because they sent me the wrong version of season six, I ended up sending that back. And I was going on Reckless Records website, which is here in Chicago and everything, and uh, they had the final three seasons for like twelve ninety nine, fourteen ninety nine a piece. So it's like this ended up working out better than when I got the other season six purchase from Second Spin because I got it for like eight bucks less or something like that. So I ended up w working out with this because I, I was thinking about getting the complete series box set. But I wasn't really crazy about the packaging, or both the artwork and the actual packaging, because they just kind of suck all the discs in one gigantic freaking keep case. And it's like, I don't really care for that. I kind of like the look of these different seasons, the kind of color-coded type of thing. It's a little easier. It's, it's some, some, of the, some, of the, some of the keep cases here are a little bit broken, but I can live with that in general, because they're a lot more compact. I can deal with that a lot easier than a giant freaking thing if it starts falling apart. Then you got shit all over the place. This is a little bit more easier to kind of work with and everything and so on and so forth. They keep your disc a little bit more organized. But uh, Amazon had the complete series up there for about, at the time, about 108 bucks, And I worked out much easier with this because I ended up only paying about like 80 bucks or so for this. So my sister buying season four for me kind of cut that whole thing out. And I ended up working out better this way. So <laughs> a plan worked out well. And the uh, last thing I got for HD stuff is I did pick up the, uh, the Target exclusive version of Justice League on Digibook, uh, Blu-ray and everything. It's kind of going a little wonky on me right now. i got to fix that a little bit. But regards to that, just got to fix some glue on this. But uh, uh, as, as you, if you saw my review, I did, enjoy, I did enjoy Justice League, even though it does have uh, issues and flaws with it. I still found it to be generally the right tone I was looking for, the right vibe I was looking for for the film, if it has shortcomings in plot and character in some places, such as Batman really doesn't feel like Batman as he should be in the film. It feels a little kind of off in the whole film, not 100% type of uh, commitment in terms of the presentation of the character, but Henry Cavill nailing it as Superman with the screen time that he had. I thought all his scenes in the film were absolutely fantastic. It just hit off the right vibe and quality for me in general. But uh, I got this. I figured I'd, I'd get this for a little bit extra than the regular edition. And uh, the digital book in here is kind of an excerpt from Justice League, The Art of the Film, a uh, book that they have out now, I guess. And uh, it's a really good, high-quality type of stuff in here. Really good uh, kind of hard cover here. A little bit of a hard cover here, then kind of nice, slick, uh, glossy paper inside with a lot of information and different uh, production artwork and stills and stuff like that so i thought for an extra three bucks beyond the uh, cost of the standard version or whatnot i felt it was a nice type of thing and uh so i got the digital copy a dvd i'll never use and the blu-ray and uh i watched all the special features and i thought they were they were nice i thought the stuff they offered in there was nice obviously they could go and have a much more <laughs> in-depth type of almost like a alien free documentary type of thing going on or such because of all the the reshoots and the rewrites and bringing in josh whedon to do this type of stuff and work on directing the reshoots and refashioning things and all that type of stuff that we are aware of and everything but uh in general they did a good job of uh spotlighting a lot of the costuming in the film the uh history of justice league in the comics and some of the special effects type of stuff so in general i thought it was a nice package and Overall, I enjoyed what they had to offer, so uh, time will tell if there's ever anything more that they'll ever inject into the whole media market with this film or whatnot, but uh, we'll just have to see. But I thought it was a nice package. Some people might might not want to be paying 30 bucks for it, but uh, I, I, was, I enjoyed this packaging, this presentation, everything. It's got this nice sort of lenticular type of cover, a little bit of a 3D experience going on there, so... Uh, it's good. It's got a, a nice black sh uh, s style to it and everything. So it looks nice. I like it. I just got to correct this little uh, adjustment here on the cover here with the tray case and everything. But uh, in regards to that, that's, every <clears throat> that's everything I got for uh, Blu-rays and everything. I'll get into 
Laserdiscs and DVDs in another update because we're already at about 20 minutes or so and I don't want this going on eons and eons. So let you know guys know again Hemi Revengeance music video hits on Monday. I'll be working on a Predator 2 review over the weekend here and there and we got the Back to the Future commentary being recorded this weekend. So a lot of great stuff coming up and the Ghostbusters 2 commentary between myself and Trent is going to be coming up in the next week. So if you haven't heard the commentary for the first Ghostbusters, go back and listen to that. Whether you watch it with the film or just put it on while you're doing exercises, sitting at the desk at work or wherever it is. It's a fun time or whatnot. Maybe not entirely safe for work. We throw in a little bit of uh, loose language in there or whatnot, but it should be okay in general. But just go ahead and enjoy that when you can, and uh, we'll be getting up some new content here really soon. So thanks, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.